Hello and welcome to another episode of Nightcap with Nightcat, the kitsch-minded show where we talk about toys, boys, and life's other joys. I am your host, Nightcat. Thank you so much for being here. We've got a great show coming up for you. We are going to play with some classic 90s nostalgia Pokemon in Sunken Treasure. And I have got some really great stories coming up in the letter box, including a bunch of dead bugs who dyed people's feet black. But before we get into any of that, I should just address it. I am sunburned so good. I look like a little plump cherry tomato today. I understand that, and I'm sorry if it's distracting. If the headband is distracting, check this out. It could be so much worse. What did I do to myself? So I wore a sweatband to work. I'm working at Scales and Tails again with animals. And uh, I put my headband on for a show because I get sweaty. And the sun didn't penetrate that, but it got my face Oh, real good. So I'm looking kind of crazy right now. You're just going to have to deal with it. I am going to be wearing the headband for the rest of the show <clears throat> so that it's less distracting, but you all know what it looks like now. Hey, speaking of scales and tails, if you don't know, I am a reptile handler for Scales and Tails Utah. So I take all sorts of cool critters to schools and stuff, and I teach people about how awesome they are. So I thought we could do it tonight. Welcome to Wild Wednesday. I'm gonna move my mic over, and I'm gonna put a towel up for this one because he's probably a little bit soggy. Ooh, are you ready? This is one of my favorite animals. I can't wait to show you. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, claws, claws, claws. Enough with the claws. This is Koopa Troopa. Look how crazy he is. Oh my God, have you ever seen anything so cute in your entire life? Koopa Troopa is an alligator snapping turtle. He is I, for sure at least five years old. I've known this guy a pretty long time. Um, and he's still very, very young. Right now, he probably weighs, God, I bet he doesn't even weigh five to 10 pounds yet. But when he's full grown, he's gonna get over 200 pounds. He'll be the size of a wheelbarrow. So he's still got a lot of growing to do, but that doesn't mean I wanna get anywhere near that mouth. We call them snapping turtles because they snap with that chompy little mouth of theirs. In fact, I'm gonna stop wiggling my finger around him because he has a tendency to like bite down on his arm, which is not very good for him. So right now what he's doing with that big old chomper is telling me if I get any closer, he is gonna bite down on my finger. And even though he's not anywhere near full grown, he can still do substantial damage. They have an incredibly powerful bite. If you saw Frozen 2, Olaf made a pretty bold claim about turtles being able to breathe through their butts. Now here's the crazy thing. That's actually kind of true. This guy does gaseous exchange through his cloaca, which means that down at the bottom of a lake or a pond, if he's trying to avoid a predator or if his lake freezes over or something, he can, he has special blood vessels in his butt, in his like tail, that allow him to exchange oxygen in the water and absorb it into his bloodstream. Now he can't do it forever like a fish, but he can do it for a pretty long time, which is pretty impressive. Now this guy is an ambush predator. He sits and he waits for his food to come to him. It's like me during the pandemic ordering DoorDash every four minutes. Uh, he just sits and he waits for the food to show up at his door. So he is pretty well camouflaged. If you look at his shell, he just sort of looks like a rock. If you look at his body, he looks a lot like mud and algae and all sorts of stuff. Even the inside of his mouth is camouflaged. If you take a look in there, it kind of looks like mud as well. One of the only animals whose inside of their mouth is camouflaged. Most, an most an oh, stop biting yourself. Hey, yeah, it hurt because you bit yourself, bud. Stop it. Excuse us. They're one of the only animals in the world that the inside of their mouth is camouflaged as well. Most animals' mouths are pink. Like ah. He has a camouflage mouth. He sits at the bottom of a lake or a pond with that mouth open, and he's got a little pink thing in the bottom of his of his mouth that people might think is his tongue, but that's actually a lure. So he sits there with his mouth wide open, and he waits for a fishy to come by, thinking that that lure is a worm. So the fishy will go down there, try to chomp down on it, and he goes da 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 da, and he gobbles them right up. You look at the bottom of his shell. It kind of looks like he went to work without his pants on today, right? He looks like he's missing a bunch of this shell. But that's actually how this turtle is evolved. They don't have this part of their shell. It's called the plastra on the bottom of a sh uh, turtle shell. 
He doesn't have this part of his plastron because most of his protection comes from that big bitey chompy thing on the front of his face. So he's able to defend himself pretty well without that back part of his shell and this allows him to be a little bit faster and move a little bit better. He is just one of the amazing animals that I get to work with at Scales and Tails. If you ever want to come check it out, visit scalesandtailsutah.com. Uh, you can also book me, ask specifically for Jackson, when you book your show with Scales and Tails and I may be coming to your birthday party or something. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, we're going to say bye to Koopa Troopa. Bye, Koopa Troopa. Bye, guys. That's his voice. I don't know what to tell you. That's just the way his voice sounds. <laughs> All right, that is Wild Wednesday. I think it's time for us then to check out the stupid news. Let's get into the litter box. What stinks in here? The litter box is the part of the show where we dig through the stupid news headlines and I tell you what's going on. Let's get started in Maine, where beachgoers were horrified when they couldn't get the beach off of their feet. They had these big nasty black stains. Take a look at this. Ooh, it was so gross. And no matter what they did, they scrubbed and scrubbed. They used like soap and oil. One lady says she even used a Tide to go pen to try to get some of these stains off, which did not work. So they call up officials and they're like, uh, your beach is turning people's feet black. What do you, uh, what do you gotta say about that? They sent in an oceanographer to take a look. It turns out that there were just a bajillion, I don't know real numbers, so bajillion is the only thing I can think of, of itty bitty bugs. The wings are like the size of a pinpoint. They're tiny little bugs. And there are just a ton of them that have washed up on the beach and their crushed up carcasses are the thing that are dying people's feet black. So it's almost like they're stepping around in permanent marker, but it's just bug exoskeletons. The oceanographer though, says, do not worry, I'm sure as soon as the winds change, the bugs will get washed back out. But until then, if you're gonna go to the beach in Maine, just plan on either wearing socks or just get really cool with looking like you have filthy, filthy, filthy feet. Filthy feet. <sighs> An anti-vax registered nurse. Oh yeah, apparently they can be registered nurses. I don't think that should be allowed, but here we are. An anti-vax RN by the name of Joanna Overholt testified before Ohio State House of Representatives to talk to them about the dangers of vaccines. So she has this whole speech about it. And then she says, you know what I've been seeing on the internet? She quotes videos and pictures that she's been seeing on the internet. You know what I've been seeing on the internet? She says, I'm magnetized because I have the COVID-19 vaccine. Things, metal things will stick to me because I, you know what? I'll let her explain it. Yes, vaccines do harm people. By the way, so I just found out something when I was on lunch and I wanted to show it to you. I have a key and a bobby pin here. Explain to me why the key sticks to me. It sticks to my neck too. Yeah, so if somebody can explain this, that would be great. Any questions? Okay, crazy lady. Here's an actual magnet. I am vaccinated. I got my shot right through the cow here. And we'll take a look and see. Nope, doesn't stick to me. The reason the key will stick to your chest and not your neck, you idiot, is because when your skin has any sort of moisture or grease or lotion or anything on it, it can stick to things. Have you ever sweat? onto a leather car seat. It feels like you're getting skinned alive. Let me peel my sweaty, beefy legs off of the back of your Porsche, I'm sorry. I can't believe these people. And I personally think the best part is at the end when she's so smug and she's like, hmm, any questions? Yeah, lots of questions. Did you see everything not stick to you? The bobby pin and the key? They didn't go anywhere. Did you not see that? Other questions, where do you work? Can I ever avoid being seen by you? Can I ever get myself into a situation where I'm guaranteed that you're never my caregiver? That would be just, I would feel so much better continuing through life knowing that you are nowhere near me. And I hope that woman loses her job because that is ridiculous. I'm all about free speech. I'm all about saying what you wanna say, but that is a medical professional absolutely giving the middle finger to medicine, to the science behind medicine. She shouldn't be allowed near patients ever for any reason. Sorry about it. And finally, a man in Michigan bought a scratch-off ticket and then he went out to his car to finish filling up with gas. He starts scratching this off and he realizes that he has won the $1 million jackpot. 
So naturally, he starts freaking out like he's on Oprah's Favorite Things episodes, and he jumps into his car and he takes off. The only problem is, he forgot to take the handle for the gas pump out of his gas tank and he drove off with it still in the tank. So he says he was just so excited he didn't realize what was going on. And he says that he will be using the money to buy a new house, to get a new car, and to go on a vacation with his family, which I think is all very, very sweet. But. I couldn't find anywhere where he said that he'll use some of the money to replace that gas pump handle. <laughs> Speedway, I wouldn't count on getting your money back anytime soon. That boy earned that money. And that is the litter box. I think it's time for us then to dive into some good old nostalgia with another sunken treasure. Sunken Treasure is the part of the show where we dig through my toy collection and we play with something awesome today. Something from everyone's childhood. Well, everyone, if you're my age and I'm a hundred, this is the Burger King exclusive gold card series of the Pokemon franchise. They were released in 1999 to coincide with Pokemon the movie, which if you haven't seen, what are you doing? I cried like a child because I was a child and I was sad about Ash and then the power of friendship healed them. Ugh. I loved that movie so much. These are really cool. They sold them at Burger King and they come in these little cases. They're little actual like working Pokeballs. You push the little button and they pop right up. This here, we got a Togepi, which is pretty rad. Oh, uh, there we go. No glare. We got ourselves a Togepi. We have a Poliwhirl, a Jigglypuff. Jiggly, 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 jiggly. Jigglypuff. You can't really see them on the camera. I understand this. And there is a Mewtwo. Oh, the Mewtwo is so cool. People find them and they think they're exceptionally valuable or something, that every collector wants them. The thing is, in 1999, that was like the height of the Pokemon craze. Everyone who wanted them had them. They made a bunch of them. Every restaurant was sold out. Let me tell you something. My mother drove across every Burger King along the Wasatch Front in Northern Utah. I swear, she knocked down every single Burger King trying to get me all six of these toys for Christmas. And she did. I loved them. I was so excited when I got them. But you know what? Here's how ungrateful children are. My mother spent her entire Christmas hunting these stupid things down. Every Burger King, everyone telling her no, she'd never find them. She finally got them. And then I used them for target practice. I set them up on a box in the basement and I shot this with my BB gun. <laughs> because children are the worst and they destroy everything, everything! But I have them now, I have four of them now. I saw them on sale at a local toy shop, it's called BT&T Toys. It is one of the coolest places. I love their, they have the best retro toys. They sell collector's items, but they had these listed for 10 bucks a piece and I knew I was walking out with them as soon as I saw them. So no, they're not particularly valuable. I got them for 10 bucks. Everyone had them. They're littering the internet. You can find them all over eBay for pretty cheap, but they are still one of the best things in the collection just because they're so shiny and cool. Look how pretty. And that is Sunken Treasure. Before we get into another Night Cat Classic Tale, I just have a couple of things to talk about. First of all, thank you to everyone who has joined our Patreon. Patreon.com slash Nightcat Show. If you like what we've been doing, if you like the YouTube channel, if you like the podcast episodes, if you like the true crime tours, if you like any of it and you want to see it keep going, you want more Nightcat content, I can only do it because our friends at Patreon take such great care of me. Let me tell you. The end of the month was coming, and I still didn't have a job, and I needed money really fast for rent, and the Patreon really helped me out a ton. It helped me get by for another month. I am part-time employed. I'm still looking for a full-time job, hopefully in radio, but until then, this is how I'm getting by. Patreon.com slash Nightcatshow. If you can donate either $3 or $5, it would be so very much appreciated. Thank you in advance. And speaking of the true crime tours, don't forget the Nightcat true crime walking tours of downtown Salt Lake City are on sale. You can find a $5 discount link in the link tree. Check out the description of this video. Click on linktr.ee slash 
slash Jackson Wit. The very first button will be a $5 off coupon if you order through that link. There's another true crime tour tomorrow night. They're happening so quickly. If you have nothing to do this weekend, I got the best thing. Come learn about murder and hang out with me. Nightcat True Crime Walking Tours. Find it in the link tree or visit nightcatshow.com for more information. It's time then for another Nightcat Classic Tale. I have to start by asking you a question. If you find a hair in your food at a restaurant, do you send it back and get a new order or do you pick it out and eat it? I mean, it's only in there for a second. I'm a picker. I pick the hair right out. I'm not bothered by it. It doesn't concern me. If, as long as the hair is not in there while I'm eating it, as long as I'm not staring at it and eating it, I feel like, eh, everything's fine. Take the hair, throw it away. I'm eating my food. Well, I was really put to the test one day when I went to see a movie. Me and my sister were on our way to see Kick-Ass, which when I worked at the movie theater in Utah, we had to cover up the last two S's with tape on the poster. So it just said Kick-A because we were very concerned about families. We got a lot of families complaining <laughs> that it said kick ass. Anyway, me and my sister were going to see kick ass. We stopped by the Flying J and the Flying J had bagel dogs. It is a hot dog wrapped in a bagel and just fried to perfection. Oh, I love a bagel dog. I was so excited. So I order one of those big old honking things. I grab it and I just start screaming, bagel dog! My sister gets into the car with me every four seconds, bagel dog! I couldn't wait to get into that movie theater and start eating my bagel dog. I started rolling down the windows and yelling at passersby on the street, bagel dog, bagel dog! And I sit down in the dark theater and it's just as good as I thought it would be. It was divine. And I munch and I munch and I'm like, oh, oh no, I got a hair, that's the worst. But you know me, throw the hair aside, I keep on munching. And then I take another bite. And it is a chunk of hair. It looks like Samara from The Ring is pouring out of my bagel dog. It was so much hair. I can't believe that the person who left the hair in there is still alive. Like that was a crime scene wrapped up in a bagel. And I look at it and I just start screaming. I was the only, me and my sister were the only ones in the theater. I just start screaming, panicking, crying because I just ate somebody's entire scalp. And I'm not gonna sit here and say that that's where my trust issues started. They started much, much earlier than that but it certainly didn't help matters. And I am not a very trusting person and I am always going to investigate a bagel dog. And if there's a food that I can't see inside of, I'm not eating it. Cause there could be a person in there. That is another night cat classic tale. I think it's time to tuck you little night kittens into bed with some warm milk. Warm milk, good news stories to help you get to sleep. This is so sweet, and I love this girl's energy. She's just the best. According to The Sun, a woman was just hanging out on the beach, having a nice day, splish splashing around, when the tide brought up a shark and washed it up on the beach. I'm gonna show you the video here. It's like a three or four foot shark. But this woman realizes that if she doesn't do something, that shark is gonna turn into a crispy little fish stick sitting out on the beach. So she springs into action. With bare feet, she runs on down to the shark, picks this thing up by the tail, and walks it back into the ocean. Check this out. Good for her. I would have done the exact same thing. I love big bitey critters. I would have just gone up and tickled his belly. I want that shark. I want that shark in this fish tank and I want him now. And that is another episode of Nightcap with Nightcat, episode 23. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video and comment on it. Tell me what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. Tell me everything. I love making the show better for you and I can only do that if I hear from you. Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to follow me on social media. You can find the social media for me and the show at nightcatshow.com. Go check out the contact us. It's got everything over there. Hey, 
Thank you to all of my patrons. If you're not a Patreon patron already, patreon.com slash nightcatshow. Don't forget, we upload the audio of every episode of Nightcap with Nightcat on the Nightcat Radio podcast. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. Nightcat Radio has the audio from this show, a lot of my other videos, as well as the true crime episodes every Friday. Curiosity Killed Nightcat. Curiosity Killed Nightcat available on the Nightcat Radio podcast. And if you like that true crime stuff, don't forget that tomorrow we've got more spots on the Nightcat True Crime Walking Tour. I want to show you my favorite city. I love Salt Lake City. I want to show you all the cool stuff there, and I'm going to teach you about some of the horrifying murders that have occurred there as well. Get the tickets at nightcatshow.com or get your $5 off tickets at the link tree in the description of this video linktr.ee slash Jackson Witt. Hey, tell your friends about this show. Tell everyone about this show. Thank you for continuing to support everything that I do. You're all just the best little munchkins. I love you. Good night. Bye. Until next week.